theme that I've chosen today is the LGBT community across the world and across India. We have suffered a lot of tragedies, but also most victories in recent times, with a lot more countries coming forward to decriminalize homosexuality and to give more rights, more opportunities for the people of the community. The team that I've chosen is the LGBT community. Even though the community has suffered many tragedies throughout the years, even the most recent one in London of a lesbian couple being hit and beaten up for not kissing in public transport, I'd like to focus on more victories that we can see throughout our states and throughout the, throughout the international world. A court judge in Karnataka, to the state I belong, ordered the state government to issue a circular to all the educational institutions across the state to make it easier and instructing them to allow gender and name change, making it the first in India to do so. Before this, it required a tedious process of getting a court order to go to your educational institution to get your gender and your name changed. But now, because it's been easier throughout the state for the, trans for the people of the transgender community, to, for the people of the transgender community. Another really important South Indian state who has been a forefront runner of the LGBT mu movement in India is Kerala. Shashi Tharu was a ma member of parliament from Thiruvananthapuram who actually vocalized his concern for decriminalizing Article 377. He's introduced it in the parliament twice and has been rejected both times. Kerala has also generated a lot of policies that help in the employment of the members of the LGBT community, including Kochi Metro, who has employed over 30 employees from the trans me transgender members. In the state of Odisha, Duty Chant, the athlete who is now internationally recognized, has come out openly gay and has said that she is in a same-sex relationship. This was a huge moment for a person coming from such a small village in such a conservative state in India to be a part of this international arena and platform in which people from the LGBT community have a voice now through some of the most prominent change makers in our country. And then in the state of Gujarat, leading towards the west of India, the only openly gay prince who is the is Prince Manvendra Singh Golden, the heir to Rajpipla in Gujarat, welcomed a lot of the, like a lot of the LGBT community people who have been shunned by their own families, who have been discriminated, who have been left out by society. He had welcomed them into their house with open arms. The people of of Northeast India have always been talented, and the LGBT community of Northeast India have been particularly so. Manipur's own Bihesh Hiram, who represented India and Thailand as Miss International Queen 2016, was a member of the LGBT community and brought home laurels to the country. Manipur also lies ahead than most states in India, where people like Sandra Nandiyapam became the only trans model to make an appearance in the closing day of Ghana White Complete Fashion Weekend in Assam in 2016. Likewise, a person, likewise, Loy Loy Harangopam, also from Manipur, recently set an example when she bagged India's first ever transgender beauty pageant, Miss Trans Queen India 2017. In North India, the state's first HIV AIDS texting clinic was opened in Jalandhar in 2018. It was opened by members and would be run by the Shan Foundation as a part of their project Samarth, which is strengthening the abilities to manage and respond effectively to HIV and AIDS in India. With support from the Elton John HIV and AIDS Foundation. On June, now moving on to the countries that surround us. On June 7th, 2019, Bhutan's National Assembly voted overwhelmingly 
to in favor of removing the sections 2013 and 2014 of their national of their country's penal code which criminalized gay sex the step by a predominantly buddhist conservative country is a step towards gaining an international platform in which we can vocalize equal human rights to everyone in may 2018 pakistan's parliament approved transgender persons act which is also protection of rights act this legislation of the act took place after nine years of concerted judicial activity, public discussions and activism by transgender people in Pakistan around the topics of basic human rights for transgender, transgender people. Botswana, now moving on to different parts of the world. Botswana scrapped the penal code that made homosexuality a criminal offense in Africa where still there are 31 out of 54 countries that consider it to be one. And this move was brought about by a student and was supported by various LGBT community NGOs. And this was introduced in 1965 and the criminal offense, if once uh, was sought through in court, would lead up to seven years of imprisonment. And most recently, the United States embassies all over the world, including Chennai and Mumbai, were prohibited actually to raise the pride flag along with the national flag of the United States. But a lot of embassies went against this order, especially embassies in Chennai and Mumbai who raised their rainbow flags in accordance with, together with the American national flag defying Trump's acts as being the first president to prohibit the raising of the national flag during Pride Month in June. Tanwarin Sukhapist is one of the five, oh sorry, one of the four transgender members of parliament in Thailand, where in this, in that country, a lot of discrimination takes place on the basis of your sexuality. So being a member of parliament and a person belonging to the LGBT community is a big step for those in that community in Thailand who need a voice to be represented at a government level. Brazil's Supreme Court voted on Thursday very recently to criminalize homophobia as an act of racist, of a ra act of racism, as an act of um, prohibiting people from performing their basic human rights like liberty now this is just the lower court which has been uh, which has passed this um measure which is being cl which classifies homophobia as a crime similar to racism until the upper house which is mostly held by conservative which is mostly held by conservative majority and is strongly influenced by evangelical churches passes a law addressing this if they do pass this law criminalizing homophobia in a country which is one of the most dangerous pe dangerous places for lgbt people in the world would be a significant step in making it a safer place for this community and of course, most recently, Ecuador became the Ecuador's highest court authorized same-sex marriage in a landmark case seeking to expand LGBT rights across South America. The decision was lengthy and took months of being advocated and lobbied for these specific rights for LGBT people. These are some of the victories all around the world, not to mention Taiwan and its recently decriminalized same-sex marriage act. A lot of us are being seeing steps taken towards guaranteeing these people, people who are just human, a place in a world where they've been discriminated for weight.